The one thing that separates human beings from any other species is our extraordinary ability to learn. From the moment we first walk the earth, we quickly realize the only defense against tooth and claw was to be one step ahead of predator or prey. In turn, we taught our children how to hunt, gather food, make tools, in short, how to survive. For hundreds of generations, this practical knowledge was passed down, resulting in a species that today controls the destiny of our planet. But are we now in danger of failing our children? According to internationally acclaimed educator John Abbott, society's single-minded drive towards economic profitability has created an educational system that overemphasizes classroom instruction, leaving many of our youth overschooled but undereducated. Isn't it stupid to think that by the age of 18, everything that still has to be learned has to be taught in a classroom? Abbott offers an interesting alternative. And how about an environment where, in fact, secondary education means spending maybe half your amount of time in a building called school and half of your period of time with tutors who are not school tutors but are community tutors? Evolving education, learning in the 21st century, follows students, teachers, parents and administrators who are facing the challenges of the future by embracing the teachings of John Abbott. From bustling suburban and inner city schools to a remote community in the Gulf Islands, this series challenges our traditional concepts of education. By stressing learning in the context of community rather than on instruction in the classroom, students are making decisions about their lives, about their local and global communities, and ultimately about the planet. John Abbott is on a mission. Wherever educators gather, Abbott is preaching the gospel of change. He says the times call for new ways of educating and engaging our youth, because for many, the traditional methods of classroom instruction just aren't working anymore. One 15-year-old got up with the most enormous confidence and said, I don't want to insult you, please don't think I'm being rude, but do you realize how boring it all is? And she went on and said that, and then somebody else, another youngster, got up and said, you know, it's almost as if you're treating education like a pre-cooked television dinner. We'd actually be more interested in trying to work out what we were going to cook. You almost make it too easy for us. Shami Rathwell can attest to that. As principal of Centennial Collegiate, one of Saskatoon's newest secondary schools, Rathwell saw the truth in Abbott's message, but knew it was going to take a lot of hard work to put his theories into practice. For those of us that have been in the classroom, we've all seen kids' eyes glaze over when you start talking about something. That's what John started us thinking about, is, is how can we get past that uh, memorization, direct teaching, and get kids into more relevant uh, learning. Um, he also talked about this whole cognitive apprenticeship idea and uh, how, you know, uh, teenagers really need to see the purpose of what they're doing, but they need guidance as well. And so you start with that scaffolding in place and then slowly take it away so they become more independent learners. So all of those ideas were sort of, I remember thinking, okay, these are the ideas, but how do you do that? And then, out of the blue, Shami Rathwell received a phone call from a local research park wanting to partner with the school. The idea was intriguing because um, here was a place that actually had world-class scientists working at it. We are working in the, uh, in the area of getting students more interested in science and technology. It sort of started to solidify that we would do a program where the, the mentorship would come from Innovation Place, but uh, the teachers would come from Centennial Collegiate, the students would come from Centennial Collegiate. After months of planning and scheduling with teachers, students, parents and Saskatoon's research community, the Centennial Academy of Science and Technology, or CAST, was born. The program offers grade 10 and 11 students interested in science a whole new way to learn. By combining Abbott's principles of cognitive apprenticeship, problem-based learning, and school-community collaboration, students can choose their own projects and work at their own pace. Jackie Gregoire is one of several teachers leading the program. She says it's exciting, challenging work, although she admits sometimes it's difficult not slipping into old habits. 
We're forming relationships with the university, with the synchrotron, with Innovation Place, all partners that are just awesome, right? They're just well, willing to bend over backwards for you. So you're trying to form those relationships, which is going very, very well, but then you're trying to, um, well, you're working with kids, and so you're trying to inter introduce them to a new way of thinking and a new way of doing. Um, you do have subject matter that needs to be covered, uh, and so you're working on that. And so with all of these things together, uh, I have to say, unfortunately, you can't change everything at once, so I've kind of had to fall back on tried and true, and then try and introduce new things as we go along. Technology instructor Kevin Kaiser agrees. He provides students with the tools and technical know-how to better present their projects. According to Kaiser, getting the Science Academy going has been a learning experience for everyone. Students are used to having the teacher give them the information and then just regurgitating the information back to them for their evaluation. But now we have to teach them how to do the evaluation themselves. So what do you want to learn? What is that going to look like? How will you know that you've learned? Uh, give us some evidence for learning. And so that whole evaluation process had to change as well. And so the, the whole system of, of teaching has to change to go with the evaluation because the students are very much a partner in the teaching process. One of John Abbott's prime tenants is something called cognitive apprenticeship. John explains how, as a child, he learned a valuable skill from a mentor who changed his life. An old man, McFadgen, was well over 80 when I met him. And then one day he said to me, do you want to learn to woodcarve? And for three glorious years, he treated me like an old-fashioned apprentice. And then I went away to boarding school. And I failed Latin for the fourth time. I was bound to fail, six weeks away. When the school carpenter, who was so menial, he wasn't even allowed into the teacher's room, took me to one side and said, congratulations, you've just been chosen to represent Great Britain. You're the best schoolboy woodcarver in the country. And I rationalized. If I can be the best woodcarver in the country, why can't I pass Latin? But I went to my Latin teacher and said, because I have to pass Latin in six weeks' time, I'm not coming to any more of your lessons. I'm going to teach myself. When the results came out six weeks later, I was told I got 89%. But by that time, I couldn't remember any of the Latin. And I still woodcarve. And I learned something which has changed my life, which was basically that learning and schooling are not necessarily the same thing.